right everybody and welcome to the 13th video of our coronation as I'd like to call it and uh the soundtrack that you heard was from the movie called Hook which is a very good movie that I'd recommend for you to watch it's about a guy who has to discover his past and uh, the only way he discovers his past and has to like remember all these memories is because he wants to save his children. And he has to fight off these pirates, there's fairies, there's flying, there's the lost boys. And uh, I think you're, something's coming to mind for some of you and that's the famous Peter Pan. So the hook that I showed you before it's called Hook, the movie that you heard the soundtrack for. The one that you saw before. Called Hook. It's based off of this movie, Peter Pan. But if you have not watched Peter Pan, then you must, must watch Peter Pan before you watch Hook. Um, it's about when Peter Pan grows up. Hook is about Peter Pan when he grows up. And uh, I think both of these movies are just amazing and they create so much imagination and it, they emulate everything that a kid wants to have they don't want to grow up they want to fly they want to have fairies they want to fight pirates so peter pan especially i'm pretty sure you guys have watched that it's a classic but if you've not watched that watch it you have got to watch it and then watch the recommended hook movie it's very good as well, and if you're a Peter Pan lover, then you're just going to love Hook. So, into our lesson. Today we are going to be talking about partitioning shapes. And when I say partitioning, partitioning shapes, excuse me, you might be like, well... I know shapes, I know that word, but I don't know partitioning, What does? what's that? So basically partition, which comes from partitioning, so partition, if you'll search it up on Google you'll have similar definition, but it's basically meaning something Sorry for the background noise, but something being divided into, and in our case, equal parts. So f with this definition, I think you could be able to make a guess and conclude that we're going to be dividing up shapes into equal parts. So when we do that, something else has to come into play, and that is fractions. So we're not, not typically, I'm not typically going to be talking about fractions specifically. I'm not going to be adding any, nothing about that. We're just going to be naming fractions in a sense. So I just, I'm going to write this down right now. I want you to remember it for the video. You got to get this lodged into your memory. You got to remember this. And it's okay to always refer back to this point in time, but you just got to know this before going along. So basically, the number two is have or plural halves. Plural meaning more than one, three thirds four fourths five it's fifths six inevitable sixth seven Gets pretty simpler as you go down the line, but the highest number you're going to see, at least from me, is eighths. So let me just write that in for you. Eighths. 
eighths. So you might be saying, what do these numbers mean? Why is a two a half, a three a third? But all I want you to know is that when you see two of something, it's halves or half. If you see five, five parts, so this is where the parts come in. If there are, let's say, seven parts, we go to seven and we say, oh, it's sevenths. Um, I'm, I'm going to explain it more a little bit later, but just know that when it's like, for example, a four, it's linked to fourths. So just know those links. Two goes to halves, three to thirds, four to fourths, five to fifths. Whenever you see something that has six, it's six, seven sevenths. Fix that, and then eight eighths. So let's move on. So when we cut up a shape, when we partition it, we have to do it equally. E equal. Think about that for a second. Equally. That's the most important thing you got to know about this entire lesson. If you're going to take one thing from this entire lesson, when you partition shapes, all of the little parts of it have to be equal or equally. For example, when I, if I say... If I ask you to partition the circle into two pieces or two parts, right now there's one part. It's the big circle. There's one circle. But I want there to be two pieces in the circle. I cut it like this. Is this correct? No. Why not? Exactly. Because this little thing over here is not the same or equal to to this big thing over here. As going back to the equal to conversation from the very first video, equal to is the same. So like 5 is equal to 5. Well, this little square could be the same as this little square. Obviously, if you say this and this, these two things are not the same because this one is smaller than that one. It's easier to tell with shapes, and this is why we're talking about partitioning right now because it's an introduction into something more complicated that you're going to see later on, which we will discuss later on when that time comes. But I, I drew this circle. I'm going to draw it again. I drew it like this. And there was a problem because this little thing on the left is much smaller than the side on the right. Am I correct? If I drew it, if I separated the pieces, it kind of looks something like this. Piece number one, piece number two. I drew a big line and I separated them. This one, number one, is much smaller than two. However, if I draw a new circle, it might not be that accurate, but if I partition it like that, well, that seems equal to me. So if I, my teacher said, put the circle into two equal parts, there's one part, there's two parts. There's little sections in the circle. So if I drew this thing and I went and I asked you how many pieces or parts does this rectangle have, you would count it and you would say it has 10 pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So little pieces is what we're trying to achieve try to make and try to look for. So here comes the conversation with the halves, the thirds, the fourths. 
If I said, make this circle into four pieces. Make a, let's do a square, a square into four pieces. Well, first off, I wanna just start with two. If I do two, I have two equal pieces. That's always easy to do. But watch now. We're gonna do one more and you got four equal pieces. So if I did this and I shaded this little thing, what's this one thing? This, that is one fourth of the big square because it's one piece out of four pieces. One piece out of four big pieces. If I drew this circle and I did this, those look equal to me. I count them up, three parts. If I shaded this and this, as this is one fourth, one piece, one fourth, to fourth, what would these be? Two thirds and two over three because these two over three. So there you go. Since there's three pieces, we write thirds because thirds is linked to three and fourths is linked to four. So now we went in, we discussed that they have to be equal. It can't be like this or it can't be bounded or separated into three parts. It can't be like this because these two are not the same size as this one so it just has to be for like this rectangle I can't go like this and say I'm done partitioned it into one two three because these are not equal those little parts are not equal I said that when I partition it into four separate pieces let's say for example let's go with eight two three four five six seven eight and I shaded these three That three would represent three eighths, which could also be written as three over eight, because three is what we have shaded, and eight is the total amount. And we know we write eighths on it because there's eight little pieces, and when, when and the eight is linked to the number eighths. Or if I did this, two pieces in total, one, two, one of them shaded, so we write one. Since it's two pieces, it's linked to half. And that'd be written as one over two. Little overview of what we did. But if I said, and there's just a quick side note. I know that it's pretty simple for me to go like this and draw three equal parts with everything like that. Over time, you'll get it. And uh, as of now, we only partition with rectangles and circles and squares. You might see something else on the worksheets. Pretty confident that you won't though. But it'll come with time, partitioning them into equal stuff. You'll get it. Over time, once you do the worksheets and the games, you'll get a hang of it. It'll start to click. And then you'll just be like, oh, if they want me to do four equal parts, bada bing, bada boom. You don't have to think about it and say, okay, this is two. If I went like this, there would be four. So you won't have to think about it as much. So over time, when you do it a lot and you practice it, you'll be able to just snap your fingers and say, bada bing, bada boom. Here we go. We got the answer in five seconds. But as I said before, it takes time and practice it, it took me years to get to this perfection 
and I'm still not at this perfection because I've even tried some of your games and uh, the very difficult ones were very demanding. But uh, whenever you partition, especially for the games, I'm just referring this to, it has to be in equal parts. That's the most important part because they might ask you for the circle and say draw it into three equal parts. Just make sure and you can't do this. They want you to only draw like two lines or something. So just make sure that when you do it, they're equal in a sense. So just things to look out for when you're doing it. So equal, number one important thing. Make sure that they're equal. And then remember the link. So if I said three, link it to thirds. And then another important part, is if I had this, split it up into a By this is not equal, so if I'm gonna do this and split it up into eighths, and I shaded these two, it's two little things, so two, eight, so eighths, and write it as two over eight. Pretty simple. But one last thing before I leave you, I just want to, so that basically just summed up what we've been doing. But now I'm just going to give you an example. So if I give you the shape, let's say a uh, rectangle. And I said, draw five equal parts on the rectangle. Well, then you'd go, okay. Over time, you'll realize how to do it. This is the answer. They're somewhat equal. This kind of looks a little bit bigger, but it's okay. You're drawing it, so it won't be as brutal. Nobody's perfect. So we understand that one might be a bit bigger than the other one. Sorry, I moved that. Put that back. But uh, if I gave you a circle and said draw it into two pieces, you'd go like this. But uh, just as I'm saying before, the drawing part like the square into equal parts, four equal parts, like that drawing part, it's all going to come with time. The more you practice, the more you look at the answer keys, it's okay to look at the answer key before you actually do the question if you're struggling. But uh, look at the answer keys, that's important as well. Even if you're struggling, don't be stubborn. Look at the answer key, it's okay. But drawing this and knowing how to split up a shape or partition a shape in a sense into a random number of parts, maybe seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It'll all come with time and practice. But if I said draw, if I gave you this square and I said draw three fourths of the square. We have to work backwards because we always drew the square, what we've been doing, and then found the three fourths. So we're working backwards. So fourths is four. So I need four equal little parts. One, two, three, four. And three means that three of them three of any of them, any ones that I choose have to be equal so let me give you another example if I give you a circle and I said two thirds scratch that actually one third singular no s we would say third is three three parts so let's draw three parts these are not that equal sorry one of them, if it's one third, one of them has to be shaded. There you go. And again, going back to the three fourths and what we've been talking about, three fourths would be written as this because this one number goes on the top. 
this fourths number that's linked to the four goes on the bottom. This one, the one goes on the top. Third, which means three, goes on the bottom. So just remember that, remember which one goes on top and bottom. Watch this video uh, a second time just to put that in your memory. And uh, all right guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little video uh, here. And uh, stay safe, stay cool, stay learning. Bye-bye.